so the diagnosis is where we collectively take a look at what's going on in your situation and we talk about it and we diagnose what is what is actually going on what what are these behavior problems what are they coming from what are they called how many layers are there to these behaviors so diagnosis is a big part that a lot of dog trainers miss because they don't they don't know or they don't take the time so diagnosis is important we're going to talk a little bit about this but i want you to already be thinking about how you're going to diagnose your dog's particular behaviors. And it can be confusing and it can be messy and there's oftentimes multiple layers. It's not just like, oh, the dog, like saying the dog is aggressive, I always, all right, slow down, like back up. We've got a lot to talk about to understand what that actually means. You see what I'm saying? And it, again, you could spend a half a day reading articles, looking at studies, understanding the different types of aggression. Um, so keep diagnosis in mind because it's very important when you develop your training plan, right? You want to be chopping down trees in the right forest. Okay. Um, we're going to quickly, so the first thing we do is we understand if what we're seeing is normal in, in your dog and in your situation or your breed. And I'll give you a, a quick story on this. Because of people's interest in what a dog looks like and make, making money perhaps, there's these trends that happen. And a recent trend this year was the uh, English cream, golden retriever, beautiful. They're like white, they're fantastic. We've had several that are just absolutely wonderful. Well, we get a phone call from a young man down by uh, Ocean City and, and he's got a, a, a golden retriever, four or five months old, that is displaying extreme resource guarding. Like if there's food in a bowl, you gotta watch out. It's like, like biting, bad. I went to do an in-home evaluation, which I don't do a whole lot of these days, but I, you know, I, I kind of want to see that. I need to see what is going on. And I get there, and we're starting to do some stuff. The dog's great. I mean, he comes out, he says hi to me, like I pet him. He's given great body language, looks wonderful, happy. It's a, it's a husband, a wife, and then a three- or four-year-old kid. And, you know, 20 minutes, it's like, good. I'm like, man, you know. But, but I, I'm like, you know, I, I, but I believe you guys, you know. I don't need to necessarily see it. I believe you that there can be danger here. So we start with a very basic thing. I have him get a bowl of food and just hold it just so because I want the dog to start kind of following him around a little bit, maybe do some hand feeding. So he's holding the bowl of the dog's kibble, just plain dog food. He's here. The dog's here. We're in the kitchen over here the three or four year old kid goes like running by, like not even anywhere, I'm talking 10 feet away from, from him standing like this. That dog leaves here, runs over and bites the kid in the arm. And it wasn't like a, it wasn't like a super like holes in blood, but it definitely broke the skin and obviously the young boy is screaming and I've never seen anything like it. Um, so yeah, what do you say, you know? It's a tough conversation. Well, and just to give you some closure on what that situation entailed, I said, okay, you know, make sure the kid's okay first. Pick them up, love on them. Like, and I felt awful. You know, I'm, my job is to not let people get bit, not let dogs, have bad, you know, my job is to keep everybody safe. So I felt bad and we're standing there talking and I, I told him right away, I said, that is not normal. <laughs> that is not right. Okay, for a puppy, golden retriever, whatever, it's, it's, this is not normal. So the first thing that, that we did, we came up with a little plan and I, I wrote him a letter, okay, on our letterhead, signed it, saying that I've never seen anything like this, it's not normal and I don't 
think that you know my recommendation would be to not have this dog in a home with children. He contacts the breeder, West Virginia or somewhere, uh, Virginia or West Virginia, I can't remember. It gets weird very quickly. They talk to him a little bit, tell him that he's wrong and blah, 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 like they're not really responsible. Well, they stop answering phone calls and emails. They go to their website, take down the parents of the dog, and basically start hiding stuff about the genetic pedigree of the dog. So he returned the dog to the breeder, and actually we just got an email from him. He got another dog, and we'll help him train that one. So that stuff happens, and I get to see it because I'm the guy that people call when there's issues. So I probably see it more than, you know, to me it seems skewed, but I guess I'm the one that gets those phone calls. But being able to understand if what you're dealing with is normal or not is a really good place to start because it can be, it's a safety issue. And luckily no one got hurt beyond that, but I just, I got another one that almost very similar with a chocolate lab, put his head in the trash can to try to like lick some ketchup off a plate and the, the dad went in to pull the dog away. And I mean, he punctured his hand, four and a half months old. The layers of that, there's, it's resource guarding in, the, in that both those cases, the dog has something that they want or they're claiming it, and then dominance aggression because the dogs are actually making active movements towards the person as opposed to if I'm trying to like cut a dog's nails or I, I need to move in on the dog and then they go, ah, that's a more defensive. Dominance aggression is when they, you know, they're coming towards you. And then a big one, those dogs are skipping steps in the common aggression cycle. Warning signs, growling, raising a lip, moving away, posturing, all of those things, but they're going straight for the bite, which is very dangerous. So most likely there's genetics. That when a dog's four and a half months old and hasn't had a bad life, but is displaying that. So the dog can, pro the, the lab can probably be fine in a, the right situation, but you, you know, you gotta be real careful if you wanna have people over at your house or have kids around, because no matter how much training you do, if a dog demonstrates multiple violent attacks on a human being, you cannot go in and change that dog's willingness to do that. That makes sense? You can help prevent it, manage it, and make it less likely to occur, but there's still going to be a possibility. And kids don't know. They, they, you know, a four-year-old kid doesn't, they're not reading body language or contemplating consequences. Redirecting? Um, okay, so the question is, if a dog redirects, and what that means is a dog is like frustrated or, or focused on something and then, and then they redirect that on uh, the handler or another dog. You actually see that quite a bit. If there's like two dogs in a yard and they're at a fence and they're barking and going nuts, they'll start like attacking each other. You've probably seen that before. So redirection, um, yeah, it's typically dominance. And a lot of times, and, and a lot of times, barrier frustration. If a dog wants to go do something or see something or get somewhere, and there's something holding them back a fence, a gate, a crate, a leash. So, barrier frustration happens, and then they redirect on something else. That's the, like more of a dominant position. Like, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to just do it. So this is good. Take note to, to those three questions and, and put, plug your dog into those. As we get into applied behavior analysis, we're going to want to understand what behavior we want to be changing. You have to identify that. Then we can figure out how are we going to replace that behavior and what are we going to replace it with. 
very, very good approach to a dog training plan. Instead of just being like, well, I'm going to correct the dog for doing this stuff. We're going to figure out, well, what are they doing? How can we replace it? And what do we want to replace it with? Okay.